I want to take you back to 1960. And as you'll know, Murray Holberg has passed this week. Lovely story from Martin about it. And when people remember Holberg, and it's before my time, I wasn't born till 1964, but in 1960, sorry, um, uh, 1960, the Rome Olympics, um, Murray Halberg, Peter Snell took the word by, by, well, by storm. What happened there? Well, rather than me reading some dry account off the interweb, why don't we talk to someone who was there? Her name is uh, Jenny Cowan, and uh, she joins us on the program now. Jenny, thank you so much for getting in touch, and lovely to talk with you. How are you? Hello. Good morning. I'm very well, thank you. Nice and sunny in Cambridge. Oh, mm. you're in Cambridge. All right. Now, yes. Jenny, mm. let's go back to 1960 in Rome. How old were you? <laughs> okay. What were you doing in Rome in 1960 at the Summer <laughs> Olympics? Oh, I was having a wonderful time. I was 20, yes, and I I was living in London, and um, I was uh, working in London, and um, I was a crab from Matter Matter, and my sister was there too, Dinny, and we decided to do a ticket tour of Europe with uh, three other girls, five of us, and my dad had, in those days, bought a Vauxhall car with overseas funds. There was a system where you could import a, a car from London to New Zealand. And we were run like a Polish me, shipyard back then in our economy, basically. <laughs> yes, we, that's we were. Well, he trusted this 20-year-old child with his beautiful new car. Anyway, so there we and we had to keep it in London for 12 months before we could export it back to New Zealand. So... We drove this car around Europe. I can't believe it myself. Five girls. And our plan was to end so up... So what was the a Vauxhall or Velox or something? What sort it of was a top of the range, top of the range Cresta. Oh. <laughs> so oh, you were so in the Cresta work. and you're cruising Europe because of the import risk. This is a great story of its time. So I, you've are got you sure dad, I'm not, ra- am I not, not no, rambling? No, this is, this is classic. Mm-hmm. So you've got oh, Dad's Cresta. This is pre-combi van time, right? <laughs> yeah, well, yes, but I was much higher up than the combi vans in those days. <laughs> in this Cresta, we had all our tent and camping gear in it. We sort of were going to camp our way around, as we did in those, well, I still do. And um, and we drove all around and, and ended up in Rome and um, just booked ourselves into some camping ground and put up our tent. I remember mean, it was terribly windy and the Italians had to help us, but that was all part of the fun. And and then we didn't have to buy pre-tickets or anything in those days. We just sort of turned up at the gate, I suppose. And we said, oh, look, there's two Kiwis running today. Gosh, oh, we'll go to those. Yeah, we'll go to those events. And I'd been in London for two years, so we had had no rundown of any athletic form or people um, from New Zealand. The names meant nothing to us. Um, are you still there? No, yeah, I am. I'm listening listening in rapture. This is such a good story, Jenny. Oh, so you rock up, you buy some tickets at the gate for the for the track and field at the Rome Olympics on the afternoon, mm. I think it was, wasn't it? That yes, Holberg it and Snell are running and you have no idea who they are. Not really, except that they were in black. And that's all that mattered. Okay. So you sit, yeah. you got seats in the stands? Oh, uh, no, I think we, no, I don't think we had stand. I remember us all standing around when when they won. We were standing on the ground and we just, just was, we just shouted and screamed and people were looking at us because there wasn't many Kiwis there who were cheering them. I suppose there was in some other parts, but where we were, we were the only ones who were cheering and we all had these colourful Rome sun hats on and we must have looked a treat but it was just amazing and we didn't like after the race was over that's all we could see we couldn't follow them up at all except the presentation from Sir Arthur Porritt and I know that he um, each of them looked we were so proud and they're all black so you stayed for the medal ceremonies we must have, yes. That's a bit vague, that, but <laughs> I I do remember their black track suits. And, uh, you, uh, could you get alcohol inside the stadium? Gosh. No, no gosh. I, well, oh, I don't know. 
Yeah, no. Yeah. I, well, I don't remember that, but probably probably we couldn't. I don't know. And did mm. you realise at the time, Jenny, and it's now called the Golden Hour, right, which is, and it, I think Snell it? won oh, the shorter yeah. rate race first and then how big win, wins the longer race. Did yes, you realise? Right. Did you realise at the time that you were seeing absolutely one of the greatest moments in New Zealand athletic history? Look, no, I'm almost eighty-five now, and it's taken me all these. Well, it's taken me so many years to realise what a thrill it was, you know, and how privileged we were, yeah. and what a chance, a chance thing it was too, really. Yeah, mm. I imagine and this is weird because, gosh, I suppose these days you would have taken selfies and. And you would have put it on Instagram yeah. and, and Tinder or whatever. Um, exactly. But yeah. you just have that experience. Did you take any photographs or anything, Jenny? Did you have cameras with uh, you? Yes. Um, I've not really of, of the ra men or the race, no. Um, I don't know why we didn't, but it, was, it all happened so quickly. You know what? It's almost better that you didn't, Jenny. <laughs> it's almost, it makes the story you've just told us so pure, almost from another age, and forgive me, I'm not getting down on your years, and you've told the story beautifully. So you watch two track and field gold medals, the greatest hour in New Zealand sport, you're on holiday in Dad's mm. Cresta in Rome, <laughs> and, and what did you take off? Did you see any more of the Olympics? Is there some backstory? Yeah, we did you run into Peter Snell in a bar? Did you snog Halberg? Come on. No, but no, but there is a very funny little twist to this. There was a another New Zealander rowing there, Jim Hill in the rowing. Yeah. And he, but the rowing lake was way out of Rome. It was miles away, too too far for us girls. And yeah. um, he rowed. He later on rowed with a Cambridge boy called Norman Suckling. Yeah. And um, I had the connection with Jim at the time, and, and I would love to have watched Jimmy row, but I couldn't. Yeah. I came home and married that Norman Suckling <laughs> in a, in no. a year or two. No. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, they all said, oh, did you go and watch Jimmy at Rome? And we said, oh, no, it was too hard. But, oh, um, we just <laughs> saw a couple of guys running. They did all right. Yeah. Yeah, did that's you, right. Did you, did you realise... I wonder if people back home, because of the romance of listening to it on the radio and the reports here, when you told people that you'd been there in Rome and you'd seen mm. Snell and Halberg win, what was the reaction of people who'd been back in New Zealand when that happened? I mean, did you realise then? Yeah? No. No, there wasn't much reaction at all. In fact, I think it would have been almost lost. It probably in their circles it would have been, yeah. but not in my circle. Yeah. It was like... Um, I don't know, people almost had forgotten we were there, you know. Yeah. It was just nothing, really. Mm. Oh, Jenny, how many of you were there in the Cresta? Five, five girls, all of us under 20. Jeez, that <laughs> sounds like trouble.